Welcome today, we are going to talk about my productivity setup and what I do with it. Honestly, it has been a big work in progress where I constantly added new parts until I finally arrived at my dream home office setup. I work around like 70% from home as a machine learning engineer and spend a lot of time behind this desk, which makes it totally worth investing several thousand dollars into it, uh, I guess. I start my day at 6 in the morning and the first thing I do is some 60 minute high intensity workout, which I could totally watch on this big ass monitor. Or to be more honest, I wake up at 9 and read my emails while I blow dry my hair. Yeah, I'm really not a and then around 30 minutes later, I usually have my first video call, which I have this little setup for. I'm one of these people that just thinks better when they are walking. And when you work a lot from home, you will also notice that you just never do the basic fitness thing all people just do while going to work. It's this extreme sport called walking. My personal rule is whenever I have a video call, I will use this walking station. And when you do like two to three hours per day, even with my old man strolling speed, of two kilometers per hour which is 1.3 miles per hour that's five kilometers or three miles per day that i would never do without this thing i also use it for some simple tasks like checking sql queries that require more browsing than writing code and some strange things that you would have never thought of now for my actual job as a machine learning engineer i usually split the monitor in three. This screen is huge and basically is the same as two displays, but you do not have that annoying part in the middle, which makes for a great working experience. It's the Samsung C49 H. G90, which totals 49 inches. Additionally, I use my second monitor for Teams or sometimes monitoring tools that just show how my deployment is doing. If I am using Premiere to do video editing or debugging intensively, I use the full view, which really gives you a huge space to look at everything at once. The second monitor in this setting is mostly used to display my file browser or code to occasionally drag a few files into the window or edit some debugging variables. It's just one of my old monitors which I transferred into this setting. This setup is really amazing for every workflow imaginable. The only thing missing is my talent. Playing games or watching movies, it is a blast as well. The screen just gives you a huge area to enjoy whatever you are doing. Now the true power of this setup only shines when you use fancy tools. For those that don't know it, it is a Microsoft tool that allows you to split your monitor into arbitrary areas. In my case, I personally like five. It's a nice number, it's prime. It's part of Fibonacci sequence. It represents the amount of fingers I have on each hand. And it's a metaphor for the five elements, spirit, water, fire, earth and air just like a pentagram. And jokes aside, you can do with it whatever you ever want to. Another great thing is that I hooked it up such that I only need one USB-C to connect one of my three computers to the entire setup. I have one MacBook and two Windows, which is my favorite operating system for accessing Google Chrome to then access the Google Cloud, which I can then use to access my Linux virtual machine in the cloud. The way I did this is by connecting my four favorite USB devices to this little USB switch, which holds my speakers, my microphone and my mouse and keyboard. The monitors are connected twice, once to my ML gaming editor PC thingy and once to the USB docking station that then simply uses USB-C to bring all together to my laptops, which is important to me because I need my personal laptop to flame people online about how terrible their life decisions are. Speaking of terrible life decisions, I also own this Dyson Pure Cool Me ventilator air cleaning thing for 400 bucks, which I use for like three weeks a year to throw some air into my face and really doesn't help at all to cool me down. But as other Dyson products, it's great at sucking. This one mostly at sucking money out of your wallet. The third and probably the coolest thing about this setup is that you have three different working modes, sitting, standing and walking. And that all thanks to this huge ass table. It is two meters by one meter and honestly I would even have bought a bigger one, but then again at this size there are not many options. 
I'd sustaining this, which is necessary if you're planning to use a walking bed. This particular table is called the Kerman Move 5, but as long as the distance between the legs is right, everything should work out with the walking pad. Effectively, I only sit on half the desk and use that half for most of my time. It has this fancy little button system, which you can use to configure the exact height you want. Now we have this standing mat there, which just makes you feel more comfortable with your life. To be honestly, I rarely use it, but it's so chill that I also use it while sitting, so definitely worth the money. Why don't I stand more often? Clearly because I just think walking is better than standing. It's not like Walking is more efficient, but after four hours of sitting, taking a little walk makes you more productive, I feel. And if it's only for 30 minutes, really. Now I own this Kingsmith Walking Pad R2, costs around 500 or so and could actually also be used for jogging. I mostly just use it with this 1.3 miles per hour or 2 kilometers per hour, which is really slow, but it's so slow that you can still type comfortably and I would say it's enough to do some simple data analysis and mostly back meetings or writing emails without breaking a sweat. I found that you can shift your simpler tasks to a small session and that in combination with your video calls will give you plenty of opportunity to walk during your day and work without getting slowed down. On the contrary, I think the short physical activity really makes you more productive. Ah yes, my speakers. I bought the Audio Engine 2 because they were on some random internet list saying these are the best mid-range PC speakers and I, as a very informed computer, just bought them. They can do all the things my other speakers can't mainly being connected with a simple damn USB and you can use them to play music or whatever. Then I also have this Blue Yeti microphone and it's one of the best $100 investments. I love standing microphones for video calls since it just saves me from having to fight with cables and headphones. And again, it's connected with USB, which I love. I mean, I have expensive shotgun microphones, but really for simplicity's sake, damn USB is more than good enough. I am Swiss, so I have a Logitech keyboard and a mouse and uh, I had it for over 10 years. I mean, a keyboard and you know, it can kind of still type letters. Now the mouse is a Logitech 500, two I think it has like eight extra buttons that I never configured and a lot of other features I really never use Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. I also have this Wacom drawing board I bought for drawing data flow or UMLs or whatever and I can probably say since I bought it one year ago I have used it like five times and quite honestly never buy one, you won't need it. Unless drawing is your hobby or something like that. There are those with displays integrated and I feel then the story might be slightly different, especially for teaching YouTube videos or whatever, but not that one. And last but not least, my CO2 sensor, which constantly reminds me that I'm not dead yet. I know, yeah, I have a chair, it's the Gyroflex 353, my company provided it for me and my bird back doesn't hurt so I would recommend that one for everyone. Now this has been my home office setup. Let me know in the description what I'm still missing and since I know some are going to say cable management I thought I'm going to end the video with a close-up of just how messed up it is. I mean look at this. There are definitely some cables in there that are probably not even in use anymore.